Well, good morning, folks. Hey, I was going to go crappie fishing, but it's too windy. Matter of fact, they're giving it rain for the next three days here in the Tennessee Valley. It's going to be real windy, overcast, so let's go craw fishing again. Let's fish with live crawfish, and let's see if we can't catch a couple big bass. Oh, you know, uh, today I'm going to use an 8 foot ACC crappie stick. It's a two piece rod. It's a great rod for this application here and it's a great rod for crappie fishing too, no doubt. But I like a long limber rod when I'm fishing close quarter. Uh, it absorbs the shock of light line fishing and it's just a great rod for it. But if you'll notice I have me a, a Zebco Cardinal 4 which is a, one of the most famous vintage reels that's ever been made. Um, I have three that are in primo condition, and I'll use them every once in a while, not a whole lot, because I really value these reels right here. They're, uh, they're something else. Well, I'm not kidding you. Okay, let's quit rambling. What we have is 14-pound test red Cajun line, which is a strong line. I believe it's underrated as far as how strong it is. I've caught a lot of big fish on this line. I'm gonna use a, a size one, not a one off, but a size one eagle claw hook. Real simple. I never use weight when I'm using live crawfish fishing this particular technique. But come along with me. Let's see if we can get it done. We got an east wind and they say that fish bite the least when the wind's coming from the east. I totally disregard anything that's negative. I always have about anything. Negativity is something I just don't believe in. But let's go see if we can catch a few fish. Okay, let's get into it right here. Here's the size number one eagle claw hook that I like to use. Okay, this is just a, this is not a bait holder hook. This is just the regular bait hook. The bait holder hook has little barbs right here on the outside edge of the hook. But either way, they'll work too. Now, for those of y'all who's just joining this channel, what I do is use these little dollar store rubber bands right here on these crawfish. Let's get one out right here. And, uh, that's a pretty good size crawl right there. What I'm gonna do is go over his pinchers. I like to leave their pinchers on. That's not tight enough, so I'm gonna twist it like that. And now that's tight enough. Now the reason I do this, I don't like to to uh, hook into a crawfish. Okay. I want him just as active as possible. Then I turn my hook, slip this hook up under these two rubber bands. Just like that. And I face the point towards his tail. Just like that. The reason I do that is because they'll hit these crawfish from different angles but they'll turn the crawfish tail first and swallowing tail first. So that's the reason I turn my hook that way. You can get a, a better hook set. All right, let's see what we can do right here. I just had a good bite right here, folks. I've been walking and walking and walking and walking and walking and the fish ain't cooperating today. This is the first bite of the day see what we got. <clears throat> it's a good one. It feels like a big spot to me. But we'll see. Dead gun it. Let's see. Oh yeah. Look here what a spot. Dead gone right. My goodness, he won't quit. It's a big one. 
I'm excited now. Look at here, look at here, look at here. Ha ha ha. Yup. A lot of effort walking all the way down through here, but I wanted to try this place. I knew I could get to it, but it took a lot of walking. Look here. Now that's a pretty fish right there, no doubt. And folks, that's a good spotted bass right there. That was a lot of walking. Uh, got a good hook set on him too. I like to hook them like that. But uh, that was a lot of walking I had to do, but I just wanted to fish this area right here because I've caught some huge spots right here. And I wanted to do it from the bank using this method. Let's let him go. I'm tickled to death. I mean, that's a good chunky fish right there. All right, goodbye. Let's try that again. There, this is just a straight bank, as y'all see. And I'm having to probe for these fish, but now it's just a good bank right here, and it's known to hold some big spots. I've caught some real big ones in here, four and a half, five pound. That one was about a three and a quarter, three and a half, but there's something here bigger. Cross your fingers, and let's see if we can catch one. I wanted to show y'all something. See, that this is the crawfish I just caught him on. He's not damaged at all. Not at all. Now, he's mad. If he had a pincher right there, he would have pinched me, but he's not damaged. So I'm going to use him again. That crawfish is ready. I'm going to put it back in the same spot, but from a different angle. And I'm, I'm pitching out into about ah, six and a half, seven foot of water right here. And this rip route stops about four or five foot out in front of me. So I'm fishing out in front of these rocks down through here, right at the base of the rocks and on the bottom. And I'm just pulling that crawfish along like that, picking him up, letting him fall. And when they hit these crawfish, it's the same. I didn't mention this, but it's just like a, a plastic worm or a jig, jig and pig, pork combination. It's just boom, like that. You'll see your line hop. Or sometimes the fish will just inhale it. If it's a big fish, a big large mouth, he'll just inhale it and just stay put. So they hit it a little bit. They hit crawfish different ways. But normally, if it's a small fish, when he hits it, he'll take off 100 mile an hour. And nine times out of 10, that's going to be a small fish, you know, a pound and a half, two pounds. I guess a bigger fish just has confidence. Once they inhale the bait in, or that crawfish in, they've got him and they know it. Folks, there's a lot of little old schooling fish out in front of me. And I almost threw that crawfish out amongst them, but I'm fishing for big fish and I just got a bite. Right here, about 50 yards from where we caught that other fish. Let's see if we can get a hook in him. There he is. Now I got a big fish right here. Let me move my hands. So y'all see what's going on here. Oh, they all feel big when you when you hook them close quarters like that. They all feel big. It's a big spot. He ain't no five pounder, but I'm gonna tell you what. Y'all see that? Golly, day. He's a big one. But it was 50. Look at there, what a fish. About 50 yards. And I've been fishing real slow and patient right here. And finally got that, that bite. So it's not really high percentage right here. This area is not. But it holds some good fish. Let's see if we can lift him right here. Come on in here. That's a beautiful fish right here. He's hooked good. So you're mine. So quit. Why do you want a sight like that for? Look at there. Beautiful coloration on this fish. 
Golly, what a chunk. Whew. I tell you what. Is that not beautiful? Let's let him go right here. Thank you. Thank you very much. No. Okay. There he goes. Man, what a fight. All right, folks. The the fronts on top of us, the, the, the weather conditions are deteriorating. It's starting to spit a little bit of rain. It's a light rain, drizzle, and it's gotten a lot colder. Uh, those two bass that I caught, I'm not satisfied. So what I'm going to do is change my tactics um, as far, not tactics, I'm going to keep with the same tactics, but I'm going to use a longer rod. This is an 11 foot rod, and it's got a ABU, ABU, Abu Cardinal 4X on it. It's a different reel, vintage reel, loaded with 14 pound line, but it's an 11 foot rod. And what I'm going to do is fish eddies on the actual river and see if that's going to help us catch a few more fish. Um, the weather conditions aren't suitable, but it's the challenge I like. So let's see what we can do. It's a long walk, but that's fine. It's fishing. It's the challenge of fishing that makes it mm. Okay, if that makes any sense. All right. Let's look at this right here, folks. This is what I'm going to be fishing right here. See right in front of me, there's an eddy right here. We have a, like a little point right here. And, and, and it's developing an eddy right here in this area here, right in front of us. Now, the water depth is going to be anywhere from six to eight feet of water. It drops off abruptly right here on this river. That's why I changed my way of fishing. Uh, and a longer rod So I feel like there's going to be some fish held up in these little eddies And I'm just going to walk on down and find areas like this And see if we can make one back <laughs> It's simply all we're doing I've seen my line jump I think he's a small fish the way he hit Yeah, he's a small fish, spot. But now that long limber rod makes him feel like he's about 17 pounds. It's the first bass I've ever caught on this rod. <laughs> Come on in here. Yep. I could tell. He's a nice looking little bass. Fat and healthy, but I could tell by the way he hit that crawfish, it, he hit it just boom, just like a big fish would do, but he took off real quick. I'm gonna walk right over here and let him go. I don't like to throw him from this high. That's a pretty fish. Beautifully colored. They're they're beautiful in the Coosa River. So we managed to get another one to bite. There, Elmo. Let's let it go right here. The temperature's really dropping, but we're gonna catch a bass. Ain't no doubt about it. Tell what's going on right here. Dead gun. Oh, that's what happened. Oh me. Fishing is something else. But I love it. It's a sport second to none. I popped a rod, folks, right here. That fish went up under some rocks or something right here. And when I set the hook, 
this rod popped and then the reason is is because this rod right here was given to me from somebody who fished it out of the river and it was beat up and bonged up so I'm gonna let this drift over here where I can get it and then make about a half mile walk back to the truck so I can get my other rod dead gone it that's the part of fishing that I don't like <laughs> But that's part of it. Is it not a sport? Woo! Woo! Second to none. It's got a real overcast. There's a bat. There's a fish right there. Don't worry about the overcast. Let's see if we can get a hook in it. There he is. Doggone. You talking about a subtle bite, real subtle. <laughs> and I barely got this fish hooked. That's a good spot. Another good spotty bass. That fish hit right, quit, right by the bank. Come on. He's hooked under the chin somehow or another. I don't know how he did that. See the hook placement? Right under the chin. But anyway, we got him. That's a short, chunky fish. He's pretty. Let's let him go. Go on back there. Hey, let's catch another one. Got to catch another fish. Okay. Whoa, whoa. Now that's about the size of crawfish I like to use right there. He's probably ah, three and a half inches long. Let me get this bait back in there. And we'll make us a drift. There's a pretty good current right here. All right, it's on the bottom. I'm picking it up, letting it fall. And I'm wanting to come in contact with those rocks. When it falls over, I don't want to get hung though like that. But that's what happens. Them crawfish will flip their tail, boom, right into a rock. But you got to follow the contour of the rocks. And those fish should be sitting right in behind the rocks. Okay, there he is. Y'all see my rod tilt. I think he's had it long enough. Let's salve down on him. There he is. Come on in here. Boy, I salved him a little bit too hard. He's got under a rock. Doggone it. Come on out of there. Now he's got up under some wood right here. Dead, don't it? I don't think he's that big. He's pretty good. Pretty good largemouth. <laughs> My goodness. He hit that soft. Real soft. It's been hard catching these fish today, but uh, I enjoy the challenge. That's the first largemouth. Beautiful fish. Beautiful. Let's let him go. Go on back. Get bigger. Let's go home, man. It's way out here. I'm cold. Hey. And remember, don't be too many can, but call it good.